Hello TV family, welcome back to Ted and Vero TV. My name is Veronica and this is my husband. Hi, I'm Ted. Thank you so much for joining us today. And so, the other day Ted did this video where he talked about problems living with a black woman. So I decided to get my revenge. Problems living with a white man. Let's do it. So problem number one, I have here touching my hair. <laughs> I... Touching my uh... hair. So he, when we first got, now I'm, I think I'm more comfortable with it. I don't mind when he touches my hair, but when we first got together, I don't know what it is with them wanting to use your hand to just pass through your hair especially when i have my wig on you know he'll just want i'm like um the least mistake this thing will just go south so please watch those hands <laughs> and even with my like i have my hair cut now he will try and just like you know i'm like um you just messed up my hair and he will say what about when you want a head massage yeah th when i want a head massage that doesn't count but he would just use his hair, like when I comb my hair and it's all, when I first cut my hair, I still had to comb it, you know, cause I still had hair. I pat it down nicely. Sometimes I wrap my scarf around it so that it's laid down flat nice. He would come and use his hand and do, I'm like, don't do that. And he would say, wow, your hair is cut now. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Never touch a black woman's hair. Yeah. But. I don't know. Have you learned your lesson yet? Or I've just... learned it. I've learned it. Yeah. Mm. And I wouldn't say that I do it very often. No, you don't. No, now you don't because you learned when I gave you that side look that last time, you stopped doing it. I was like, because I had just combed my hair. Okay. Well, you would think like, how do you mess up this hair when it's that short? But apparently <sighs> if you go like this, you can mess it up real bad. Someone explained to him that our hair is delicate. It is made of diamonds yeah. and diamonds are not to be played with. The other day we were taking a walk and the sunshine was actually making it look like it was sparkling like diamonds. Yeah. It did I, actually. Yeah. We were walking and he was like, honey, your hair is sparkling like diamonds. I was like, oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, it is, we are made of diamonds. Second problem living with this white man. So when he, when he tells you we are going to a party, like family parties, right? They are not really party, they are hangout. White people don't know how to party. So we Africans, as Africans, when we say, okay, we are going to a party, right? Let's say the time of arrival is at six, right? We don't get there till 8 p.m. We are fashionably late, okay? We get there, everyone is there, hi, hi. The music is popping so loud, you know? And then you get there, the vibe is like popping and the food is like popping. Everything is like ready, right? Everyone, the food, the food is endless. We eat, we hang out until sometimes 3 a.m., 4 a.m. When you go home, you are like, yes, I danced the night away. But when this white man tells you, okay, we are having a little party at my sister's house. It's actually a hangout. It's not like we are going to hang out. So the first time I came here, I dressed up. I was like, oh, we're going to a party. When I got there, it was like, all of us sit, everyone was sitting on the couch. You go grab your food. The music is, sometimes there's not even music. The music is so low and we all looking at each other like, um, I'm, I, the first time, now I'm used to it. Now I know what to expect. So, <laughs> now, <laughs> are you speechless? Uh, no, I'm just letting you, you know, destroy me. Like, I'm like, where's the music at? Where is that? You know, where is the auntie screaming at the other uncle for what he did? Where is that? You know, that's the kind of- vibe. White people's nerves are very, very sensitive. So loud noises and a lot of rambunctious activity going on stresses people out, I think. <laughs> I think I've noticed that as well. I've actually noticed that. Yeah. Like, and I don't think, I, Ted hasn't been to one of those African parties except our wedding and you saw a little bit of that. Like when- Yeah, we went to your friend's wedding a little bit. Oh, my friend's, my friend's uh, baby shower, I think. Was it my, yeah, my friend's wedding. Yeah, yeah. Like she, she's African-American. Uh, she's African American. They party also differently than yeah. ours, but they party as well. They partied. They partied. Yeah. They had Af the music pumping. The whole neighborhood was involved, whether they wanted to be or not. To be or not, and that is how Africans do it. Like, oh my God, we go all. I remember when I lived in Maryland. One time we had, we had a party. I, I was like 16. Okay, I didn't know the rules here in the United States. I was like, 
we were pumping the music. I was dancing. I was serving. And this cop, this our neighbor called the police, you know. And because we were making too much, I was a Caucasian neighbor. She called the police. And then when the police officer came, he was like, oh, you guys have to turn the music down. Yeah. Like, I was dressed like a grown woman. So he didn't even see that I was a kid, okay? I was just like a grown woman. I was like, you guys want some food? You want some beer? <laughs> That's why I asked the police officer. And he was like, uh, no. That's before I was saved, okay? Sometimes when I think about my life back in the days, I was... That wasn't so bad. You were just being kind to your neighborhood friendly officer. The officer was like, <laughs> no. You guys turn the music down. We turn the music down. Guess what? My uncle wasn't too happy about it. He was like, party in the basement! Because the basement had some proof and you couldn't hear. Yeah. So like more than 60 people rushed to this basement, right? Oh my god! You can't shut black parties down. <laughs> no, if they run into a roadblock, they just move or adjust things a little bit adjust, and the party continues. Exactly. That's what with my friends went into when there was like yeah. the little um, problem with the first location. They found a different location. That party was popping. That whole neighborhood was late. Yeah. And that is how I'm used to. The next problem, living with this white man is in relation to culture differences. Because our culture is so different, having to explain things, you know, my behavior and why I do certain things is so, sometimes can be a little frustrating. I love teaching him about my culture. I love involving him about, okay, this is why we do this. This is why we do this in Ghana. This is why we drink this. But it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's easier when you have someone on the same like spectrum as you, someone who comes yeah. from the same culture, yeah. so they understand. But being with this Caucasian man, this wonderful guy right here, is a little tricky. You it's a conversion process. It is. You know, I mean, like I'm learning about it, she's learning about me, and so over time we're becoming, you know, more fully unified in that sense. Yes. But it does get a little bit bumpy and frustrating. It does. Sometimes it too. does get bumpy and frustrating. Like, yeah. But you've done so well. I remember when we first got together, Ted ordered two books about Ghana and started reading on Ghana. We still have those books actually. Mm -hmm. He started reading about Ghana to familiarize himself. So now he understands. He watches a lot of video about Ga the Ghanaian real estate, uh, Ghanaian agriculture, Ghanaian days. He watches a lot of stuff about it and he understands how we operate. You yeah. know, uh, like Africans, we support our families and he, he has understanding of that kind of stuff. And I love that about him. And it takes someone who truly loves you to want to learn about your culture and to want to adjust, invest in invest that, in that yeah. and adjust his or herself to that. The next problem, I have five, okay, and I'm almost there, but this is a problem. L moving away from my state for some reason, not being able to find any African market here, not being able to find African restaurant, not being able to find what I used to love is extremely frustrating. Yeah. And that is a problem. You know, you go to a regular store, the stores that they have here, and they don't have anything you are looking for. You have to drive at least 45 minutes, go 45 minutes to come back or sometimes 30, depending on traffic, okay? Yeah. Just to get fufu or to get, I can now order fufu from Amazon, praise God. But just to get some banku or so, something. You no, know? the other day I ran around for three different grocery stores looking for okra. Yes. And it's just like okra. It's it's just really not that deep, like my wife <laughs> yeah. likes to say. It's, it's not, not that, that deep. It's not that deep. Where like is the okra, Oregon? Yes. Seriously. So it's kind of hard uh, to find African food here. And I'm like, should I even be the one to open an African market here? But, but it could sure use a few more African it could food use markets. A lot. Western African markets. Yes, Western African food, the restaurant. Yeah and the markets will truly be beneficial to people like me. So that's one problem. It has nothing to do with Ted, but I blame him for that because he brought me to the state. Yeah, yeah. whatever the reason is, it is actually a problem. And yes, yeah. it was my fault. I took her from the East Coast that has basically Everything. yams and fufu and crab mm. and all this stuff just like pouring out everybody's ears <laughs> into a place that's just totally devoid of most of these things. Yeah, in Maryland, I step out of my apartment. I walk, and you trip over a yam. <laughs> yeah, I walk like three blocks and the African market is right there. Yeah. They, have, they sell everything. Let's go. So what is the last problem living with this white man? <laughs> 
seriousness in everything. Ooh, what do I mean by that? Okay, I'm not saying that us Africans or black people are not serious when it comes to things, but we tend to be more relaxed when it comes to life. We tend to enjoy it more. And that's why you hear the saying, black people are always late, okay? <laughs> it's not because we don't take life seriously, but I think that we've learned to manage how we feel about life. Like, we've been through a lot. Life will throw you curveballs, but we've learned to celebrate through it. We, we've learned to dance through it. We've learned to sing through it. Um, but living with this guy, I realized the seriousness when they come, now he's like letting his guard down a little bit. But when I first met him, I'll make a joke and he, he'll think that I'm being serious. And I'm like, um, it's actually a joke. I don't know. Yeah. That's how yeah. he was raised. I've always been super serious. Yeah. I, I don't know where it comes from necessarily. Some of it is my upbringing. Yeah. And some of it is just my personality. I was the oldest and I have two younger sisters. Mm -hmm. So responsibility was kind of always my corner mm -hmm. and it always kind of fell on me to take okay. care of mm -hmm. whatever was going on and make sure that things were going to be okay and that things got satisfied yeah. one way or the other so I don't know exactly where that comes from but I think we balance each other out pretty well yeah I'm, we do. I'm serious and kind of sober all the time mm -hmm. to, to a fault even and then Veronica brings brings more life and and energy and relaxation and and joy that comes naturally to the table so together hopefully we make great we team balance each other yeah. out like literally we do balance each other out but i can be sort of difficult to deal with sometimes yeah i mean i, I can yeah because I, i've observed his seriousness a lot and i'm like um you literally gonna cause your head to explode if you let this thing get to you and but i like this because because of the, the way ted is he's very responsible in how he manages when it comes to finances and when it comes to things being in order i love that about him and i think that it takes someone who is serious to be able to have these things all together but at the same time so it helps not to be too we like we, also, we yeah. always use this phrase haircut like yeah two together because yeah. when you are two together then you fail to be human in my opinion you know it's like you have to balance yourself yeah. there's and so, too much stress it's too much anxiety yeah yeah <laughs> so it's always good to have someone next to you that can balance you out so that's another tip yeah even when you are deciding to get married make sure that whoever is next to you you are compatible you can balance each other out perfectly and don't forget that even though your spouse may be perfect for you that doesn't mean that they are perfect yeah so exactly you you made a good point wow he he just fixed that whole um that whole video right there like okay problems living with a white man and he just like fixed it at the end see how he see? is the seriousness like i said <laughs> i fixed it you fixed it anyway <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today on another episode of telling vero tv don't forget to like and to subscribe we hope this was fun so if you have any ideas or comments please drop it below if you have any comments on problems living with a black woman or problems living with a white man vice versa drop it in the comment below have a wonderful day everybody see you next time see you next time bye bye bye, -bye.